Good evening. We have a quorum. We'll call the planning board meeting to order. First up for general information is Kevin Michelson. Hi. 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 I wanted to make my application to convert my pool house into an apartment under the accessory bylaw. Okay. And I, what I did was this package here has all the appropriate documents as well as the check and as well as the um, uh, mailers. Okay. And then these are just copies of, of all of these documents for the rest of the board members. Okay, this is two sets of auto envelopes? I, uh, my wife did it, I don't know. Okay, she needs one of the two sets. I just want to make sure. It looks, it looks like fat enough that it probably is. Yep, yep, there's two of each. Okay, great. Yeah, she got her instructions from yeah, that's the, right. the, uh, yeah. Okay, that's good. Okay, you will need to take don't the envelopes have to be stamped? Yeah, we put the stamps on. No, okay. yeah. okay. It's different, but it works. Okay, that'll be that'll be all right. Yeah, this, this is, is just all the you, 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 you'll take this and this and file it with the town clerk. Oh, okay. And okay. one set of those. You one set of one set of plans. Okay, no problem. I got I made a bunch, so I'm good. Let the wife do that tomorrow. to bump it to the 17th because we have a primary election on the 3rd. Right, okay. You're talking of March, right? Of March. Okay. The 18 grand Who's the 18 grand Oak Right off of Bay Road. Yeah, it's the oh, circle. Okay. Oh, used yeah. to be a farm. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Across from Jack Zestas. Yeah, right across from Jack and this guy. Yeah. But I have a, a too big a house for two two of us, so I'd like to con convert it. So actually three of us. This is real two or three, right? Two or seven or two or three? No, this is two or three. This is room two or three? Two or three, yeah. right? Yeah. Yes. Yes, that's what it says on the agenda. Okay, so take that. Bring this down to the clerk and. And yep. one set of plans and, right, and you're all set. Okay, great. Do you want. Yeah, those. Yeah, these are all one for each guy. Okay. So just so you don't have to hand stuff on them. Okay, thank you. All right, great. Thank you, guys. What's, have a great evening. What's the address here? 18 Grand Oak. Yeah, or the uh, mailing address is P.O. Box 290, if you need to mail. No, we'll just, oh, no, we, this is for right. a, a notice in the newspapers we would put where it oh, is. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Thank okay. you, gentlemen. Have a great day. Okay, see you in a month and a bit. All right. Uh, we've got a few minutes. We've got a couple of bills Mel, today. I love the beer. Oh. <laughs> Following your lead. So is he. Okay. Yeah, mine's falling out. So. <laughs> Okay, we got two legal notices to pay. One is for the late recent heirloom collection of 175.42. The first publication was yesterday. The public hearing is in two weeks from tonight. Motion to pay that. How much was it? 175.42. Move we pay it. I'll second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. And then somehow, I know we submitted it, but evidently it might have got lost and whatever, misplaced. We got a legal notice for the zoning articles that we passed at the uh, fall special town meeting, still in this year's budget, of 366 and 80 cents. 
motion to pay. So good. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Okay. And Ken might have something for us. And briefly, we're all talking. We, uh, we can talk to Ken. We can talk about budgets afterwards. Ken does. We don't bear. Mr. Reedy. Yes. Do you have something? Yeah, sure. Or, or you want to be part of the bigger discussion? Whatever pleases the board. It doesn't matter. Okay. He's probably on the clock. Let's talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I need to eat too, you know. Yeah. All right, let me give you one I have. So I, um, for a little bit of context, this was, I was here a couple of weeks ago, industrial use in the industrial zoning district. Uh, specifically, we were talking about the, the climate-controlled storage facility that uh, um, Ideal Movers and Storage is going to look to propose uh, South Maple Street. And so, um, kind of taking uh, Mr. Maximowski's lead about industrial use and industrial zoning district, I tried to craft uh, a zoning amendment that at least we can talk about. Um, so what I've done is I've taken the Section 5.4, the, the parking requirements, I've looked to amend 5.4.1 just to allow the 5.4.3 to supersede the 2 to 1 ratio. And then that 5.4.3, I tried to track the industrial manufacturing use category because that's what it is under your table of uses in the zoning bylaw. And then I, I did some research and in, in the balance that I, I was trying to strike was thinking about storage facilities, which are kind of a unique creature and how they're treated and in, in industrial manufacturing in total. And so I, I came up with a, a couple of different ways and then ultimately gave uh, this board an out to increase it, lower it, or, or waive it, do whatever you want to do. And so the way I've, I've essentially tracked the language of 5.4.1, um, but I've also included, and, and this is a piece for conversation, instead of off-street parking area, I've put off-street parking spaces. Uh, I thought it might be important to have some definition to that, and I don't know what the board is thinking about for the future, but I know how you define off-street parking area versus off -street, not having an off-street parking spaces definition. <laughs> so whether you use it now or later, I thought it was important to define. And then what I've done is said, okay, there's typically an office space used with these any industrial manufacturing use, and then there's like some big open floor area, and then there's employees. So I tried to encapsulate all of those different categories. Um, so I just use one space per 300 square feet of office space floor area, one space per 10,000 square feet of other floor area, which I defined below, and then one space for every employee on shift. And, you know, with that, I, I toyed with including some, you know, waveability if it's um, on a public transit route or if there's some ride sharing or some way to not have to provide that one-to-one. -one. But I didn't think it was appropriate for that section. So then I went on to say, provided however that this requirement may be lowered, increased, or waived uh, by a majority vote of the planning board. So obviously something for you to consider. So how many spaces would Mr. Banis's facility require then? This, this yeah, I'd have, to, I'd have to do the math. I think yeah. they're looking to propose um, 25 spaces. Uh -huh. And so, uh, one space for 300 square feet of office floor area, I think we're looking at about a 1,600 square foot office floor area. Uh, okay. So let's say five spaces there, and then another, I think it's 80 something thousand square feet, so another eight spaces, so you're up to 13, and then two to three employees, so you're mm -hmm. probably up to 16, 17 spaces uh, for use like that. And so again, I tried to balance that with just industrial manufacturing uses generally. So I want to give you guys a, the opportunity to, upon a finding that the parking will be adequate for the proposed use and as approved will not constitute a substantial inconvenience or hazard to abutters, vehicles, or pedestrians, you could modify it up or down um, depending upon, because there are some like uh, medical marijuana. Marijuana is a use in the industrial um, or manufacturing use category. So just thinking about that and like, well, what does that look like? Yes, if it's a cultivation facility, that's one thing. If it's a, a dispensary, that's something else. So it does fall into this. 
but I wanted to give you the ability to increase it if you wanted to in those certain circumstances. And then I define off-street parking spaces, 9 by 18, um, in dimension and sufficient for vehicles which are currently licensed, registered for over-the-road use. Other floor area, I tried to define somewhat broadly, so that's the one per 10,000, one space per 10,000. Storage, manufacturing, processing, warehousing, garaging, or similarly used floor area. Uh, and then the outdoor storage of vehicles at a warehouse or storage facility shall not count towards the floor area. So I know that there are times with like car dealerships that you count that towards the, the floor area. So this was my first crack at it, and I'm obviously open to, to discussion or, or would, would, would this be grandfathered to future owners? And well, uses? this is that's a critical point. Yeah. Well, right. that, that's fine. That's the if problem. It, if it's industrial use for industrial manufacturing use in the industrial zoning district, right. right. So, so yes, so that would be would be grandfathered sure. for for future industrial manufacturing as as, use. But if somebody came in and yes. decided they wanted to use that building for retail, but this they're going to cry. It would not. To us. This, We're going to be in a tough position. No, we are. No, 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 we are. No, okay, do not apply. They're going to cry. You're right, Joe. However, it'll clearly not apply to them. Yeah. But let's say Mr. Bainus's business is slowing down, and all of a sudden Amazon, like they have that problem in Holyoke, where they have these little vans running around by the, it seems by the thousands now. But nevertheless, okay. so he wants to supplement his business for the Amazon vans to come in. We say well, you can't do it. He said, Well, geez, I really need to. You can't. You, okay, it's, uh, it's, you can't. that's what we have to be aware you can't. of. Yeah. You simply got to go by the law. Is it going to be recorded in the deed, or is it just going to be like any other zoning? It's going to be the bylaw. It's going to be a bylaw. Yep. Not, yeah. We record some stuff yeah. in the I mean, deed. Well, assuming, just going through the process, if the bylaw is changed and then a special permit is issued for the site, yeah. we do record that decision. And so right. I think, you know, if it's a future board, oh. if that did happen, Correct. Oh, yeah. You know, it, it would be an interesting. One, one space for ten thousand. I think that's a little bit too generous. Okay. I'm thinking. You know, I wasn't sure. Like, every reason I said, I think, if, what did I say, fifteen hundred, whatever it might be, um, and that might be a little bit too much, or that might be too many spaces. But maybe we got. I think it should be something less than ten thousand. Maybe okay. maybe five thousand. Okay. I'm just trying to think. Ten thousand. I believe that um, I, and I was trying to look through my files, I thought I had a printout, but I gave the board maybe the last, uh, in October, um, a bylaw, a suggested bylaw um, model for this, the question of spaces per certain amount of square footage, yeah. depending on the type of use. Right. So um, I don't have that with me, I thought I did. Um, maybe you do. <laughs> but I, um, I, I, would, I would probably say that um, with these manufacturing, you're, I think if you were to imagine, and this is probably specific to self-storage and understanding the nature of self-storage businesses, like if you took a U-Haul, does, does Hadley have a U-Haul? Yes, um, several. Okay. Um, but it you would have a couple of parking spaces, maybe one or two for the employees, and then however you have your loading zone um, for however it's designed, I'm not really sure. Um, it's not typical that you would provide a lots of parking for those types of uses. Um, and I would say for manufacturing uses in general, um, you're providing parking for the workers, not necessarily visitors. Um, and then you know, a site plan approval would allow you to um, review the flow of traffic where you would park any sort of delivery vehicles depending on the nature of a manufacturing business. Um, it, it, it's typical that um, out of all the manufacturing uses, this type of use is probably the one that would require as much. I, I wish I had the... Yeah, we, we can look at What's it. What's our deadline, Jim? We need to have to the town administrator tomorrow the number of articles and basically what they're going to be. But he doesn't need the wording for at least a month. 
okay, so we've got to get out of here. We're going to take this home, and you, if you could, send us the you emails. E email, e email, sure. email, email a copy to the planning at MA. Thank you. That. Sure. Yeah. And then we can massage it. Uh, so Ken, do you want to email me the parking one again? If you, I will. You may have emailed it, but if I if you send it again, I will just shoot it yeah, out yeah, to everybody. Yeah. So our current blanket is two for one, right? Yes. yes. Two, what is two square feet of parking per square foot of building. Right. Where this 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 specifically mentions parking spaces, so it's right. different. Right. 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 So just something Are just we gonna consider. define parking spaces? He does. He's gotta define that five guys he's got to, he, he's got to tight. He's gotta define it here. Yeah. So to define it here. Yeah. Yeah. So so to the, in here. To so we are, but we don't not you, so you don't typically, which is right. so when I go to the municipality, they're typically they get narrower, narrower and narrower now. That's yeah. it. If you want compact, quote unquote, compact spaces, like yes. Amherst has eight by sixteen is what they consider compact spaces. They have a provision in their bylaw that says you can't have more than fifty percent of the spaces as compact okay. spaces unless you get approval. Most municipalities are nine by eighteen. Some do ten by twenty, but I don't see many ten by twenty. Well, uh, stop and shop is ten by twenty. Yeah, but so just as far as with the, well, they've got the double lanes. I mean, yeah, the double which I think is great. Um, but so, and so to to your point, what I tried to do was to think about who's going to be using these parking spaces. And so while that one to ten thousand seems pretty expansive, we're also taking care of any employees that are on the site. And there's a yeah. one to one parking yeah, ratio. That's that's true too. There, so just something because of machines and equipment, you know, yeah. don't need parking spaces. Yeah. There was, you haven't seen new machines. Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> AI is coming. Well, and also, too, they're selling boxes and packing stuff there, so that's a little bit more. Well, yeah. You, you, and you have the ability. I mean, so part okay. of this is, you yeah. know, when we come back with the presentation, you're going to see Excellent. what the, the self-storage facility or the climate-controlled yeah. storage facility, you're, you're right. going to see, like, the circulation around it, you're going to be like, okay, well, people are going to pull up, they're going to pull here, they're going to go into their storage unit, and they're going to come out. It's not a technical parking space, but it's just operationally how it happens. And if you say, well, we don't think you have enough, you put more. Or if you say we think you have too much, you put less. Are there any statistics as to how often people go visit their storage facilities? I will try to get some I'm just for you. Curious. Yeah, yes. I know. So when I talked to Brent, he said that, um, I asked about 24 hours about live-in resident because these are some of the things you're seeing he said no live-in resident here uh, as far as 24 hours their process is I think he said he has 500 and some odd units over here in Hadley of those only five have been granted 24-hour access so they have to put an application in they have a conversation about it and so you know I think most of it occurred during um, business hours but I, I don't know those are the drug dealers yes <laughs> Turn off the lights waiting, yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> what we would probably want to see as part of the application is also addressing is he going to keep his moving trucks at the other location or put them here um, so that will affect uh, and whether or not they count for parking right okay. I mean I think you want to know we need to know a little bit about of the business plan because if he is going to move his vans to this site then we'd obviously need more parking right wouldn't count those as parking would, spaces. Would, yeah okay which or they would be in addition to It'd the be additional parking, parking. Sure. yeah and of course, obviously bigger. Right. Okay. Um, yeah, that's a good, good, good start on this, oh, Tom. Thank you. Sure. One, one thought. You know, I'm coming up on one year, so you guys have a few more years than, than me ex ex experience on this. I like the idea that we have, the f you know, that control to be able to go up or down. But does that also open us up to being? Sued for being capricious or arbitrary if we're not. You're just going to have, you, you're just going to have good, solid reasons for making your decisions. Because we're using it more as a guideline instead of a hard. Right. 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 And that's why I tried to put a couple of standards in there, you know, that yeah. substantial detriment or. or yeah. and, and, and I'm not <laughs> sure we want to give the planning board this much authority to completely waive everything yeah. for the simple reason that, okay, you've got five members today. 99% of the time we agree on stuff, but in the future the membership changes We're going to be careful not to give the board too much authority to waive things. That's something I you know, it's it's 
we got to play. Ninety nine percent of the time we agree on stuff. Yeah. How many? How many? How many split decisions decisions have we had? Well, how many significant split decisions do we have? Is the question. <laughs> Very few. You can think of a couple. <laughs> I can think of a couple. Yeah, that's right. A couple. Yeah. But of all the ones that we've right. had, right. vast majority were in were in agreement. You know, maybe not ninety nine, but it's not. not but it's not fifty I, I, by I, I, any stretch either. Drift. You know, so. Anyways, okay, thank you, okay. Tom. Yeah, no, thanks a lot, and I'll see you in a couple of weeks anyway. Okay, thanks. thank you. Thanks. Mr. Kim, you are, we're ready. I'm going to get you your own name tag yet. <laughs> so I wasn't sure where we left off, so maybe let's discuss the what's happening with billing at the moment. Okay, I that's a guess. I was on the phone call with um, the town administrator and I later spoke to the um, PDPC accountant. Um, it's nothing that the planning board has to do. I believe what needs to happen because the current contract that um, PDPC has is with the planning board. Um, so in order to, as I've done for, for um, for the board is to create the um, accounting of hours for the MS4 project um, and sent that off to you and um, the town administrator has paid that. But it needs to be, basically we have to recode the hours that have already been spent because our hours are coded, mine and Patty's hours are coded to the planning board assistance program. We need to recode those hours to an MS4 project which means it just requires some additional documentation. Um, and I'm working and I will be emailing the town administrator um, possibly in doing some sort of after the fact service agreement. Um, basically the work is 90% done based on um, you know, the email that the, the board received from Patty regarding some of the last findings from DEP and um, the EPA. So what I hope to do is, um, because I need to charge my hours at like tonight, right. <laughs> um, hope to do is by the end of the week have something to the town administrator that hopefully he can turn around without much fanfare. Um, and Even and if then, you could just code it like Patty up. A capital A after it to to indicate it's on a separate track. And yeah, and, and and yeah, and I think what the thing, yeah, um, and I'm not, I don't question, I don't like to question the accountant. You know, there's whatever sound accounting practices. Usually, when things are coded, there is some sort of service agreement. Mm -hmm. So understanding that the planning board has this pot of money, um, and we are trying not to have the MS4 work be taken from that pot of money. Um, we need to create a place where the MS4 work needs to, to go and be coded. Would it be easier to code it to a, so my, our concern is that our budget line item for PVPC, our, we have a budget line item right. for PVPC, um, which has an account number and everything on our end. Yeah. Um, I didn't realize when we were getting into all of this, I didn't recall that we had a separate uh, town meeting warrant article for MS4 compliance. Okay. So all of that's going to come out of a separate pot, right. which we actually don't control. Right. But I suppose if we had a side agreement, not an amendment to our agreement, but a, a side letter to our agreement, since we sort of took the initiative in pushing MS4 on the regulatory side, yeah. uh, it just would have to be, it, you'd have to get some different code on your end because yeah. and it, on our end it comes out of a different account. So. Um, yeah, I mean, I, the, I'm not very familiar with these service agreements and we usually go through some sort of review, um, but I think, um, you know, that's. You could almost copy the service agreement we have. Right. And just put a single task on it. Yeah. And. And that's that's where I was going with um, 
basically sending the town administrator yep. that with just that task with the amount of money to cover any remaining work um, plus the $5,100. Um, so it would just be a separate entity yep. and we would then on our end recode all of our hours to that. Okay, and you may already have a code for it because we had a PBPC grant to study MS4 um, it was like a couple of years ago and we had someone from PVPC yeah. here going through all of our records and I think you built off of her work. Yeah, uh, so Patty so, started to build off that work. Uh, um, so what she had done was just left us with a menu of this is what you have, this is what you don't have, this is what you need to do mm -hmm. and then we turned to you to put flesh on yeah. the skeleton. So you probably already can just use that code if you Yeah, still I mean, have if it. it's, if it, because the, the work is funded through grants, if that grant is still available to code to. Um, I mean, I don't know if we want to, yeah. yeah we, probably, we, don't, we probably want to go back that far, but we have a town meeting warrant article yeah. of X amount. Right. And that's where that would we can but there's there's more than enough to pay put us in there for yeah, this. Yeah, no, and I and I and I yeah. get where you're going. Yeah. And that's why I'm trying to figure out the mechanism because if it's policy that normally you would need to have an agreement with any invoice that goes out, um, we need to have that agreement. Yeah, um, okay. And so yeah. it's just kind of you know, retroactively revisiting we that. With that being said, the last, the last invoice we got from PVPC was from 930. And it was a 4752.04. Mm -hmm. And I'm assuming there's more to the end of the year. So as I emailed, I believe, the, the bill and the chair, um, because the MS4 work was included in that, as well as my work on definitions and you know attendance right. at the meetings unrelated to MS4, that budget was spent. Um, if you remove the $5,100, obviously it's not spent. Right. Mm -hmm. So um, I did some accounting. Um, I don't. It's not official, oh, okay. but re reporting. And I don't because I don't have an invoice until we can figure out how to to That's fine. deal with that. Um, there's about uh, 60 hours more worth. Of okay. Work. Question. Yeah. On the $7,500 that we allot for PVPC, about how many hours a year does that per purchase? Um, but very ballpark. If, I think if 90, and that depends on... Um, Obviously who's that, working on it. working. Um, I believe it's about 90 hours. Okay. Five hours. Just for your information, we, we've been using PVPC now for... A long time. Oh yeah. At seventy five hundred thousand, I think you made the comment, and it only makes sense that the dollar value stays the same, but as the increases in inflation and the pays go up, the hours are being reduced. So mm -hmm. next year, we are going to try and double the budget. So we'll go from seventy five to fifteen. We'll see where that goes. Okay. Okay. We won't know until the yeah. meeting hits it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, we talked to the town administrator, and he's not against that. Also, they were the town administrator was talking. The town administrator also talked to who's the head of the PVPC now? Who's the the executive director? Uh, Kimberly Robinson. Kim. Kim. Kim, Kim Robinson, Kim. and talked about possibly getting. Uh, they had they have at first at first they wanted to hire a planner. They were looking to hire a full time yeah, planner to do the some town stuff. Was talking about. And I had a good talk with the administrator last week about what what, are, what is this town planner going to be doing? Mm -hmm. And they gave me a list of some things, and I said, okay, you've got probably a year or two of items there, and it's not full time. We don't have the workload for anything more than, I'm guessing, 15 hours a week. Some little more, some little less, but on average about that. And I says, we're going to hire somebody full time, pay him some salary, and probably in two years, we're not going to have a lot to do. We'd be better off to increase this budget, utilize PVPC a little more, 
and hire a consultant to do the work. Yeah, you're going to pay more for the consultant, but in the long run, it's going to be a whole lot less expensive than having a full-time person with benefits, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And I agreed with that. So the bottom line was they're probably not going to be going for full-time planning, but I know they're talking to PVPC, the Kim. Mm -hmm. Could they do these extra tasks? Didn't have an answer. They were going to look into it. I says, you know, that would my was my was my first suggestion. Can PVPC help us with this stuff? Yeah, I mean, I so I served as an interim conservation agent for the city of East Hampton um, early on my during the lap, during the summer, um, and I had office hours, so I would go to the city hall and spend three four hours there, um, and. Well, I, my schedule didn't allow for it because I was actually here, um, but to attend the evening meetings, the Conservation Commission meetings. Um, so it's possible that some sort of arrangement like that, depending on budget, um, can work. Um, you know, where presumably you, we, I can have some office hours um, and then attend meetings and do work either here or at BBPC. Um, it's possible. We, we used to have something like that. It was a CETA employee mm -hmm. way back when. And it became a management nightmare depending on the hours and what they were comfortable in doing. And all of a sudden they thought they were a town planner. And they were making decisions that really a board should make. And it became a little politically uncomfortable. Yeah. Uh, where this, I think from the point of view of the public, this arrangement is a good one because if Ultimately, you don't like what we're saying or doing, we can be replaced. Unfortunately, I see in many of our neighboring towns, the city planner is, is a dictator. And the board just rubber stamps what they're, what they're suggesting. So I think this is a good suggestion, the way you're proposing it. And no, I mean down the road, yeah, we'll probably need somebody, but at least if this arrangement for what we talked about could work out, it would be good for everybody because it's it gets going at a few at the, at the reasonable hours as needed, gets most of the work done, and it's not painful to anybody, and kind of that as opposed to here's a full time person, you know. Like I said, the workload may not, isn't there right now. Down a road, you work into it. Okay, you find out. Well, well, this person's working X hours a week. Well, you next year, you know, really it could be a little more than that. And then, okay, now it gets to the point. Where, okay, now yeah. there's 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 a reasonable need, and you work, go go as well, accordingly. Okay. Also, you get a full time person in government, and the inclination is to develop your empire. That's exactly right. Let's hire a couple more people. Yeah. Let's let's come up with some ideas here. Yeah. yeah. So, but anyway, you know that that's kind of what's been going on with 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 uh, the administrator, town administrator, and Kim looking for what can we do reasonable that'll satisfy our needs. And I think you know at the end of the day, um, you know it's the policy set by the board. Um, you know if there are certain rules regarding. And the planner can definitely just be there for administrative tasks of accepting applications, um, working with the building inspector, doing inspections for the board. Um, but you know, it, having been a municipal planner before, the tasks did end up growing. You know, doing grants, grant writing, and um, I also served as both a town planner and a conservation agent, so I had, you know, to, to work with the planning board, the ZBA, and the Conservation Commission. Um, so, I mean, it is dependent on uh, you know, the, the board. The, the building viewing. inspector, uh, I think, on an hourly basis, was well worth what he was paid. I, I think if we had you people doing inspections, it probably wouldn't be his dollar per hour equivalent, would it? No, I mean, no. the building inspector is certified in certain yeah, that, that's I'm, I'm just saying thing. inspections like it, ensuring that... Um, yeah. Not, yeah, not, it, not building inspections per the plans. Overall inspections, I think Tim is alluding to, like, do the plans, are the plans correct for submitted? Is, is, is you know, not, not 
a formal inspection. Mm -hmm. So in the subdivision regulations, we have a couple of checklists that call right. for some inspections. That uh -huh. uh, what we have done is we have decided to rely on the self-certification by a professional engineer right. employed by the builder, builder to okay. say that the work has been substantially done according to the plans. Is that, is that a potential conflict? Uh, no. Because it's we are asking enough. for it to be a professional engineer. They got a PE standard. They're, yeah. they're okay. putting their license on the exactly uh, line. Right. So yeah. is, is it a potential? <clears throat> yeah, theoretically it could be in a close case, but most of these aren't close cases. Yeah. But having uh, someone to go out and you know, just check off, take a drive through, I think all of us at some point have driven through a subdivision under construction, but you know, we're not really getting out of the car and with a tape measure and right. seeing if, how high the curbs are and things like that. Yeah. Mike, in the town doesn't, the highway department wants to inspect the water, the hookups, et cetera, et cetera, so that is left to them. So it's not completely at somebody else's discretion. Right. Okay. So, good. We got that covered. Next one. Um, so I believe that we're going to talk about definitions. Yes. Um, so I did print out. I haven't. We we the last time I was here. I can't even remember. Yeah. Um, the last time we talked about this. This is hasn't been changed. So if you still have one that's dated ten fifteen, okay. um, that should be it. Right. Nine thirteen. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. So at that, oh, we, we went through the last time, and I was going over some notes. Is we <clears> went through um, the list, and we condensed, and we moved certain definitions other under other sections. Um, there were some some outstanding questions um, about repeated definitions, like structure, which is in your flood overlay section, as well as um, in building. See it in the uh, last building. page um, under the solar energy section. Oh no, sorry. As a general um, definition. So I didn't know if you had any comment with regards to structure for the floodplain um, bylaw versus structure for a general definition for structure. The building inspector was concerned that there would be some potential conflict between the definitions that we're making in the state building code. Those have been resolved. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I or, mean, or have, have they ha been have resolved? They been resolved? Oh. Have they been resolved? With the building inspector, or have you checked it against the state building code? Um, the the state building code, I think, would be limited to a couple of definitions. I have not. Okay. Um, it would be very limited to some of the stuff here, um, I think, with regards yeah. to building and... Um, there, there isn't a problem if we're different than the state building code, as long as we define it, okay? okay. We, can, we can be different as long as we're not obviously grossly different, but right. we can be, you know, if we, if we are defining something differently, well, as far as I know, it's okay as long as you are different, succinct in your definition. I think the, it's the job of the building inspector at that point to split out what is building code, building inspection versus zoning, zoning bylaw, by, uh, zoning enforcement officer. You've got your comments in here. Couldn't you just cross re cross reference and basically say in the floodplain structure, you know, say at at the end for for building related structure, see 
paid something, and then under the flood, uh, under the building structure say for the flood drainage system structure C. I mean, there are two different uses of the same word. Th there were <coughs> a few definitions we were going to leave in various sections. And I was going to take care of, once we got this set, I was going to go through and say, okay, go, go section by section of the zoning bylaw as part of adopting the definitions. We're going to take this out of here, we're going to take this out of here, we're going to leave this. We probably should leave structure definition within floodplain because it is unique to the floodplain and structure literally every place else is defined on the last page. So that, yeah, I guess that that is um, that is something that could be useful um, if there are definitions that are specific to the certain bylaw. So structure can remain in the floodplain bylaw, as and you just have one definition there, mm -hmm. um, but then move the rest of the floodplain stuff to right your definition. So I think that was what we talked about at the last meeting was that. There were some we were going to leave in various areas because they were so unique, whereas the other ones are generally general, general more across the board. And I think we had taken a lot of those out, and we pretty much, in this one that you have, there may be a few stragglers here, like you know, structure in, in the floodplain, but everything else kind of stays in there. Are, You've hold this down pretty well. You're right, Jim. And so, I mean, if there's going to be any controversial definitions, obviously it can be singularly changed. And and this 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 yeah. definition section is by no means not going to change over the next few years. Right. As we add stuff or take stuff out, we find oh that's not that's that's a problem. Okay. So certain so certain words are buzzwords. For example, under motel. Building designated primarily for transit or overnight occupancy. I, I believe hotel and motel, we were going to take those definitions out. Okay, because the transit, there was a motel in town that is going to be torn down that went from a motel to a transit apartment. Like a single room occupancy. They morphed into apartments and they said, oh no, it's still a motel. But, uh, um, yes. But this reflects the, a change that we did discuss um, because um, there was some language. Did you want to remove that altogether? Um, I'm looking at my notes from the last. Remove what was that again? Hotel or hotel motel or hotel. lodging house. Yeah. I, I don't believe we use hotel and motel in our zoning bylaw. Okay. That's why we're going to take them out. Except maybe in uh, it might be in the table of uses. Table of uses. So maybe we shouldn't be taking yes, it out. Yes, you're right. I was just thinking that myself when I said that. For culture institution. Um, Commercial retail, um, hotel, motel, or restaurant. Okay. It's interesting that restaurant is paired with those. It's very different. Yeah, because you have defined under the bed and breakfast related terms hotel, motel, and lodging house. Okay, yeah. Although I think that was for the purpose of making a distinction between those and what a bed and breakfast was. Yeah. We could take out the words transient, you know, just leave for overnight occupancy. Yeah, the transient words, it, it's, it's a buzzword. Maybe it's from the old days uh, that is simply primarily designed for overnight occupancy. Yeah. So th there were also some some items that I had um, had come across as I was going through the bylaw that there are some sections, especially the older part of the bylaw, where the entire section is a definition. Lot. Uh, or. Um, 
lot. Uh, but we also have like a width. Uh, so 4.3.7. Width is defined, and then that's, that goes on to define width. So uh, I, I know that um, we had that conversation, and I think if you turn to lot related terms, which is. Unfortunately, I don't have page numbers. No, you don't have page If you look at the pages, it's the fourth page on the back side. Lot related terms? Yes. Yep. Okay. Um, okay. So I know that you suggested, and I added the language, also see section 4.3. Um, yep. We. That's well defined. Yeah, it's probably. Um, we, uh, we removed the width of a lot. And because that is in 4.3. Right. right. So that was a special zoning article at the time. That's yeah. People became very creative, so that square was put in. It was so creative, you could put a house on it. <laughs> so I didn't know if you, I have dots next to these. Um, yard, front yard, rear yard. I can't remember the, the comment regarding that because it still exists in this version that you see. Well, I think Jim suggested that I. I think it was at the last meeting. Said, "Yeah, keep put lot related terms in yeah. and keep the other one. That's yeah, fine." And it's never a problem until the problem arises. Then yeah. let's see what it really right. means. Right. I think it's also helpful that you do add, tell them to refer to that section. So mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, key it back. I think yeah. that that is useful. And we've we've done that for a lot of other people. I think all of you key back so, to. If you would email. I don't know if we have this, just email it to uh, okay. Bill, he can distribute it to us. And I can get going on putting the so article together. I the know. second part of this, though, for the article is going to be what we're going to strike out of everything else. Right. That's what I was going to work on once we got this all okay. set. Then I was going to go through the bylaw section by section. And okay, we're going to you know take this out, take this out, we'll leave this in, and it'll be a rather lengthy zoning article but there's no easy way to do this without being correct no, you're right um, were you planning to address that article with um, a general term of removing definitions in section a b c d or were you going to Spell out I'm not quite sure how complex it will be. So, we, like, if, let's say we have section three, mm -hmm. just as a number. We take all the definition out of section three and putting it in here, then I will do that. But if we're taking out three of the five, then I'll go through yeah, and go mention the ones we're okay. removing and leaving. Fortunately, I think we can all we can do it just by and strike section three point six point two and right. strike section nine point. Four point one. For, for the most part, I think where we're taking definitions out, we're taking them all out. Mm -hmm. Very few would be left, right? If any, right. so there wouldn't. I mean, it'll be a wordy article, but I don't think it'll be that bad. Yeah. The the newer sections will pretty much be taking everything out or leaving it. It'll be the older sections, probably the first probably five or six sections of where we'll be leaving some, taking some out, but as we get to the, to the more newer, to the more recent articles, say within the last, I hate to say it, 20 years, um, we'll probably be taking out pretty much all or nothing. All the definitions, but probably if we have a section that says definitions, right. you would remove all the text and add a reference to section one. Right, you know, yeah. See section 1.2. Right. Yeah, that, that's...
list there, um, other than sending Bill the um, parking requirement. And well, what towns, uh, West Springfield's got considerable amount of industrial mm -hmm. area, so that would be a, a good one. They have a lot of pavement. Pardon? They have a lot of pavement. Um, and I think that um, a lot of towns, and I, I, I brought this up when we were talking briefly, and I think it was about this, this um, applicant, um, about the different uses and counting spaces rather than the um, square footage of parking that should be provided. But I believe there was some um, concern about certain applicants in the past that well, it's, it's funny, the perspective of age, I mean, you, we see the problems, yeah. the warts are clear to us, yeah. where there was not enough parking for a change of use, for example, an auto parts store to a restaurant, mm -hmm. and how do you deny that person the opportunity, so that's probably our, our and, and, and when my we problem. Have, and we have experienced more than one of those yeah so it's something that we've got to be careful of where I mean, we've had quite a few change of uses where the parking was adequate for everything um, it's the older I mean really old like yeah. 50 plus year old buildings uh, or so where there was a change of use um, those we've only had a few of, but nevertheless, we want to make we don't want to create a problem today and say, okay, you've got a, like you know, Joe says we've got this today, but then the use changes to a more dense use. Well, you can't do that. Well, what do you mean? I'm zone business. That's why we have kind of one card blanche for parking, and it's got it's got its good points and bad points. Right. I I mean to but, I think to address that, and I think the movement to looking possibly at parking spaces versus parking amount is there would be a threshold based on the change of use. So if you had a specific use of car store and had, you know, one space per 2,000 square feet of a uh, car facility or an auto parts store, and then you said for a restaurant, um, one space per seven seats in a restaurant, um, through the site plan approval process, a threshold would require you to look at the parking and address parking that way. Um, and what possibly could happen is the applicant saying, oh, well, then I'm going to seek a variance from the ZBA um, to, exactly because I'm not able to meet the parking requirement. And that opens up a significant problem. Yeah. 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 And, and but it, it's, uh, I, I spoke to Jim about the fact that Five Guys is opening up, L.L. Bean is opening up, One Tin Grill is opening up, there's going to be a haircutting place opening up, and that whole area is kind of a strip mall that's been close to, put closer to Route 9. Yeah. The parking is already tense. They're anticipating Five Guys, the, I talked to the manager just on that opening day, and he said uh, all our employees are told to park over on the Walmart side, so they can have room for the customers, and it does. They they realize yeah. the problem. Yeah. I mean, I, I was I was at Five Guys on Sunday, one o'clock. Yeah, place was busy. Enough said. Um, luckily, LL Bean wasn't that busy. Correct. Yeah, and yeah, there was a ton of people in the restaurants, but there was actually, for the most part, enough parking. Like I said, L.L. Bean wasn't that busy. Be interesting um, during a busy shopping season. And of course, during, yeah. those are unique. You during a busy shopping season, summertime there's not enough parking. Period. Mm -hmm. And that's just you know those are a once a year situation where to plan for those you would be ridiculously black topped. Mm -hmm. So you're going to plan for the normal, and the malls used a lot of the parking in the main lot for this, if you want to call it the front where they got the Five Guys and L.L. Bean and stuff, and well, 
we need to do, you know, they, they're using the whole, the mall has overall enough parking, but the problem is it's not easily accessible right. and you're walking across some serious traffic. Yeah. People get used to comfort. Yeah. yeah. So, but um, good news is they're, they're all doing well. That is good. Um, yeah, so I'll go ahead and, you know. So, yeah, you're going to send me the def text of the definitions mm -hmm. and also of the parking um, yeah, and if um, you know the board wants to to work through, uh, if the board is looking at a bylaw amendment, I can assist with if we need to address parking. I think we want to. We need to do. We might need to do something. We want to be very careful because we also don't want to get to the point where, well, yeah, you can do this, and but you can't do this, and right. it, 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 we, which which based on this suggested is specific like it is very specific yes and do you want to be that specific for this type of use i don't know yeah i don't know that's a word yeah yeah um for for pure industrial uses in the industrial zone i'm leaning that that probably would be okay there's no way you can use business uses in the business zone for something like that because they change so often. Yeah. Um, well, we changed the zoning when the mall, Mountain Farmers Mall was called the Dead Mall, so there were some industrial uses that came in there, mm -hmm. uh, spin-offs from UMass primarily, that wanted smaller spaces, and so that's why that is so industrial. Yeah, there was a... That was, that was our move for economic <laughs> development. Where, where there was one of this, well, one of the, it was a warehouse club, okay. not a Costco, not a B, but a, but a, it, or or Sam's. It was kind oh, of a know. local wholesale okay. depot. Wholesale, okay, <laughs> and they were using part of the mall as a warehouse distribution center oh. for okay. their other stores. For, for their other stores, wow. and of course they only lasted a couple of years altogether. They completely went out of business, closed, but they're gone. Mm -hmm. And that was when we had changed the zoning to industrial so they could allow to do that. Plus, the mall was hurting, so we thought maybe they could do some other things in the mall besides just this, because it, yeah. it was worked out pretty well. You know, low impact, good taxes, and mm -hmm. putting it back on the tax rolls. Yeah. And uh, then that's when they started revitalizing and turning it back into the stores that we see today. Mm -hmm. um, we just kept it industrial because we says, you know, the difference between industrial zone and, and a business zone is you're never going to see houses in that whole section ever again. Right. Um, or any kind of residential use. Well, well, not necessarily. I mean, low income, lower income housing. I was thinking that, I'm not going to propose this right now, but maybe we need a high rise uh, low income housing project that would fit down there. Five, six well, stories? I, we have pretty much that now in that area. And uh, I don't think, this is my opinion, I don't think that housing and business are compatible. Anytime you want to get. in New York City. Well, no, I'm talking about the ability to scuttle a zoning, a zoning <clears throat> change or a new building coming in. Look at what happened nope. to, uh, to Lowe's. One person bought some land adjacent to it and held that whole project up for a year. Uh, yeah, and you have to for, buy them for, off. For purposes of lower income housing, one of the problems, as, as you, you described, is land. And you can preserve land by allowing structures to grow, grow hot, higher, grow taller. Yeah. And, and, and this, you I'm not saying that this right now, but this is a possibility 50, 60 years down the road. I'm, the yeah. state, yeah. We're yeah. probably going to be, want to be careful about allowing higher rise structures, much higher than we have on the south side of Route 9 because it, of the view of the uh, Holyoke Range. Range. Yeah. Uh, but there may be other spots that, you know, Winfield is a, is a good spot for, for the larger structure. It's completely out of sight. Yeah, it, it's funny, you know, the, the whole mall, uh, the concept of a mall is changing, right? Mm -hmm. So. Um, I know that there's some examples of malls turning into residential housing. Yeah, and yeah. so 
in the future and they'll be multifamily. They're not, they're not building malls anymore. Right. But we've seen the whole iteration from strip mall to enclosed mall uh -huh. to back to a strip mall yeah. now. <laughs> uh, and and, and that, that is becoming the more common thing where yeah. they where people where owners are converting the, where they can enclosed malls into some kind of a strip yeah. mall. Yeah. Um, there are, I mean, I don't want to say there's none, but there's very few strip mall, you know, enclosed malls being built in the U.S. Outside of the U.S., different story. Sure. Um, but some places like that have reasons for it. Okay, climate I really, I really climate is one. I miss that strip mall that burnt down. I'll tell you, that was a classic halfway. Yeah. Yeah. Ken, when, when you were working, were it Sturbridge or Southbridge? I was Southbridge. Okay. Was there any spillover from the Worcester vibration, the economic development they're seeing in the Worcester area? I think it's starting to. They're starting, there's, um, there was some movement um, as far as home buying and the price of homes is going up and there was um, a lot of home buying being done and because you had a lot of people living in Southbridge commuting to Worcester. Yeah. Um, and there was some new economic development that was happening as I was I think the the three large, medium-sized towns and cities, they're all towns, um, Sturbridge, Stockbridge, and Charlton, um, you know, they were, they were bedroom communities to Worcester, but Southbridge had the more urban, um, you know, center. It used to be the um, headquarters for American Optical, just a large industrial, um, use. They had some big industrial places big, in there. Yes. So um, now they're being reused for other things, right? And I remember working on one specific project within that complex for uh, affordable housing, um, turning a mill building into affordable housing. So, I mean, there's the reuse of these older buildings is happening, and it's usually for to address affordable housing and more dense, you know, apartments. Okay. Next thing to do, um, you, you got the, we have got the stuff we're going to send the email to Bill so we yeah. can get working on it. Uh, other topics remaining that we're working on? Um, I, I want to, I know that um, I think once we figure out the bill for um, the MS4 work, probably just want to reconnect with Patty and see based on the last iteration she gave to the working group right. if there needed to be any I got the impression because I think the that settlement statement yeah. that I circulated was yeah. after the working group had right. met that's correct yes. and it uh, her reply to me was that there would be changes required in the draft regulations to comply yeah. but we have a year to do that yeah. an additional year to do that yeah. I don't think there's, and speaking to her, I don't think there's much change. Right, okay. Um, the town has a bylaw, you know, and um, any applicant would need to do that. Um, but I think having the regulations sooner rather than later is yes, probably Yes, yeah. We don't want to drag it out next year if right. we can get it done this summer. Right. Or by the fall. Yeah. Because right. then it'll drag it out into not getting it done on time. So, so. What, um, what Ken had put together for us about a, well, maybe even a year ago, or right at, no, you weren't here a year ago, but when one of your relatively early yeah. tasks was assembling copies of our work pro programs going back a number of years. So I have that, I will dig it out, I will circulate that around. Okay. Because I think there are some things that were worthwhile projects that just got bumped in favor of something that was more pressing. One but of the things was the rules and regulations. Of the planning the, board, the yeah. Planning board. yeah. So I do have some well, iterations. Well, you mentioned that the, with the, uh, it's February and the new contract, you can start looking at the new contract for next year. and tasks on it. Okay. Uh, I think last year was the first year possibly 
in a ever that we got it done before the end of the year, the fiscal year. So I think maybe we want to look at the MS4 regulations for the fall town meeting. Well, no, we, no, we, don't, we don't need we don't, to, we don't we need, don't need for that. Okay, that's, that's, that's right. Public so we hearing. just need to do it. Uh, yeah. So as soon as those are settled, we'll proceed. Uh, that's why I was thinking if we do the planning board rules and regulations as well, yeah, I think that we can have a single public hearing to adopt both sets of regulations. I think that would be a good idea. Uh, was there anything in the subdivision regulations that needed to be tweaked to comply with MS4? So I think just in a quick review of the subdivision regulations, it, subdivision regulations are pretty typical all around. Um, the, the model um, that um, I presented on that uh, PDPC worked on um, does address lid and um, so low impact development and green infrastructure um, as well as maybe if you wanted sidewalks on both sides or the ability to waive certain aspects of subdivision development. Um, I think it probably um, could use a look at to see if there are things in there that just fixing some of the, the language to maybe have a stronger emphasis on the low, um, stormwater. So that is, our subdivision regs are relatively recent. Larry worked on okay. them with us. So um, I think if anything, more than likely, um, just looking at stormwater. Yeah, um, would, would be a good idea to look at them. OK, yeah, I think we can add, we, yeah, we know there'll be en enough in the there'll be enough left over to cover that at least yep. so um, if you could uh, look at our subdivision regulations as they relate to full MS4 compliance uh, because we were not that was not on the horizon when we started working on it with Larry in yeah. fact I think we even started working on it with Jessica because um, I think Larry used um, some of the Hadley's model as a base model for the six communities that we worked with. So, yeah, the critical area at the time was uh, the last lot. It used to be the last lot had to be released once the road was put into sufficient regulations. Right. And uh, the, then they'd walk away. Yeah. Uh, so now the last lot does not have to be released until it's accepted by the town meeting. So. Good. That's, uh, I mean, and that, and in t in working with the working group and working with planning boards that are addressing subdivision regulations, that is the thing that they're changing yeah. about when they release that last lot. Um, so I know that um, our, you know, and it, it sounds as if uh, Hadley has adopted that, um, so that's good. Um, but I would say that yeah, we've lived through the negative that. impact of the way it used to be. Addressing that, and if there are any issues with um, security, um, as far as this, this, the security of the, um, the, the development itself. Yeah. That is an issue, as you may know, it's, that's a hot issue in Amherst right now, because there is a subdivision Correct. that is incomplete. It hasn't been all built out. The roads have not been finished. Uh, the town is not plowing it. The town is not plowing it. And um, uh, we've been fairly lucky in that regard when we do the covenant. But I was thinking also the covenant, you know, the building lot under the covenant is worth, say, 150000 to 200000 And the town has to take it over and pay prevailing wage to pave the road. That might not be enough mm -hmm. versus what the developer can do it for. Or it could be not worth enough but it could be worth nothing if all of a sudden the spade toed frog or the spotted turtle was parked there it's true. so uh, <laughs> fortunately we have not been under um, 
a lot. I, so I'm not, I don't think we need a wholesale yeah. review of it because yeah. we have not been yeah. under a lot of development pressure from subdivisions. Um, we've had spurts, but uh, right now we have a substantial inventory of unbuilt lots. So, um, so you, so you, but you don't have any active subdivision development at the moment. Uh, nothing, no, nothing well, awaiting. No, no, nothing on the board. Everything, everything that we have has been approved, okay. and is either. Um, constructed or under construction, um, but where there's two in town, actually more than that. There's there's one completely built and there's houses on it, but there's some op available lots. We have another one that's completely in, that just not not a finished coat, and not a lot has been sold on it. We have two of those. Two of those. Yeah. Okay. And I think. Yeah. What the one. Uh, your house. And That's one, but the one is the one in, in, in Shatterfield. Is that built? That built, or is it? Yes, it's, it's, it is built. Okay. Yep. He has the road. The, the road, road down. Is, but there's no houses. No, no lots sold. Yep. Oh. Okay. The one, the one behind my house, that lot, that street has been in for got to be ten years. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Not a lot sold. I don't know if he's anxious to sell them. But that's that's their decision. Yeah, that's right. Right. Are you taxed on it, individual building lots there? I have no idea. I would think so. Yeah. This was the fourth zoning article. Okay. Thanks so for definition. Your thank thank you, you for your help. You. Affordable housing costs, uh, revised parking. Oh, I'm sorry. This is the revised. There's the revised yeah. parking. Okay. I'm sorry. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, thank you. Next meeting. Uh, do you think it's worthwhile meeting the first Tuesday in March, or you want to put it off for two months? Um, That's uh, March 3rd. March 3rd. Or we could do the 17th if you wanted to in March. Oh, let's do that. PVPC on the 17th? Yeah. Okay. St. Patty's Day? You guys going to be here? <laughs> yeah. You're going to bring the shamrocks in? I think I'm the only Irishman. So. No, no, I think not. I think not. <laughs> oh, yes. What am I thinking? <laughs> All right. You guys have okay. Good but we can Thank leave. You. Thanks, These Ken. guys are a quorum without us. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, I have that point to bring up after you're finished. Don't let me forget it. <coughs> go ahead. Go to, go to your point first. Okay. There was uh, a farmer that called me, and he's referring to a parcel on Moody Bridge Road that is managed by the Fish and Wildlife Development people. It's where the old Zuckerman farm, where the swallows were residing, and that shed has been torn down. They evidently want to put an archery course in there. I'm not sure if it's a course, the way the farmer described it, or is it going to be a uh, just an individual practicing. But uh, so I was just talking to Jim before the meeting, and so how do I proceed in answering this gentleman's question? I mean, certainly we don't like to have a lone ranger go out there and make a decision. It's usually a board decision, so I would like to comfortably tell this person what to do, and just so, so these are archery lessons. They don't. That's the question. Don't, don't, don't the question this, mark. Is, what is, is it going to be? And you it, know, is it even going to be that? Yeah. Is it good? Or maybe one person is just going to be shooting a couple of arrows there, practicing. You, you know. can shoot arrows in your backyard. Well, yes. that's exactly if, right. If, if, if it's, some, if it's some, going to be a but what if, if it's, it's going to be at an archery course or yeah. something? If it's like some that. kind of a range, they would need. Uh, they'd need nothing because it's federal property. But from that's a safety, no, right. no, from a, from that point, but a, from a safety point of view, <clears throat> depending how they're shooting the arrows, it could be a safety thing. Mm -hmm. Arrows can go. Arrows can be deadly for a couple hundred yards. Uh, they can't do the question. Okay. So that would be a building department police chief, I would think. So thing. federal is exempt from zoning? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so from a zoning point of view, they could do this, but from a safety point of view, it's a different story. 
The only reason we had site plan approval authority over the Fish and Wildlife headquarters is it's that it is privately owned at least for the government. Right, right, right. Same I, thing with the courthouse down I'll here. I'll tell you what Hal they need. They need a Frisbee golf course. Somebody could make some money with it. And they're yeah. big. They are big. Yeah. Oh, yeah. A lot of fun. Pretty good exercise. Okay. Next one is for talk about a zoning article. The Affordable Housing Trust. Ugh. Any comments on yeah. Yeah, I had the values? I had that was what I was really I'm wondering. Is should we leave them the values as in there, or change them? When did he send that? Just section four powers of trustees. Which one? Section four, powers of trustees, affordable housing four. trust. Under paragraph B, they have to purchase and retain real and personal property, including without restrictions investments that yield a high rate of income or no income. You don't really rate generate. You don't really yield a rate of income. You, you yield a rate of return. So I would say, without restriction, real estate investments that generate current income or no current income. Or just strike it completely. Why do we care if they are generating income or not generating income? Is that a qualification? I don't think so. Mm -hmm. Because it's either or. So why even have that in there? Well, that is, I think, sort of a, just a boilerplate uh, authority yeah. of the entity. So. If that's but the it case, doesn't, it doesn't make sense when you say yield a high rate of income. How about should, should be you're talking it should be high rate of return or no return? Yeah. Without yeah. restriction, yeah. investments. Yeah. They yield a high without rate. Restriction, how about just taking out, in, in, including without restriction, investments, and then just take out high rate of return or no return? No return. Yeah. Take that section out. Strike it. Okay. In fact, I think you could even say legal investments because there yeah. is a list of what uh, municipalities and entities can invest in. So, including without restriction, the legal investments. Legal investments, as opposed to real estate. Yeah. Good. So, to, so let, let, I want to make sure we get this right. To purchase and retain real or personal property, including without restriction, legal investments. Provided that the purchase of real or personal property for consideration equal to or greater than five thousand shall require the approval of the board of selectmen unless funded by an appropriation made by town meeting. Okay. No, good. Okay. Uh, let's see. Actually, it, uh, except to receive real property, receive real property, which uh, is retained real property. I think including without restrictions, I think you want, might just want to say and to undertake legal investments. The, the, the two different concepts in there. I think. And to enter into legal investments. Enter into? Yeah. Could, could legal, legal investments include where the money is going to be parked while you're waiting to buy a real estate? Probably. Yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah, that's the, the, the idea is that the a, a municipality or it, its entities can't just invest wherever they want. Correct. Correct. Um, I can't take out a town can't take out a private mortgage from Mike Sarzinski, even no. though he wants to lend us money at a favorable rate. No. Okay. So leave the values. Everybody's good with the values of five thousand and ten thousand. Where are they set? Yeah, it's, it's a practical matter. You're not going to get much real estate for five thousand, but occasionally you can pick up little pieces. I, I well, guess the, the question is, we, we, excuse me, we've got the uh, trust, which can make legal investments, but it's going to be under the, the custodianship of the account and the town treasurer, correct? Yes. Will the town yep. treasurer be deciding where to park the money? In yes. Principle? Yes. Yes. Yeah. For the and, most and it won't part, be yes. The trustees. So yes. So we're not going to worry about that five thousand dollar investment. The trust, the treasurer is not going to have to go to the. Uh, the, 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 uh, no, that well, that's okay, for expenditures, yeah, not yeah, for okay. yeah, gotcha. not okay. for investments. Okay. Good. Okay. I had a small 
just you can see two notes I had there. They're just very minor, more grammatical. There in that section too. It, it's oh like yeah. The DHCD should go there. Yeah. Yeah. And then I thought maybe a semicolon went in that other spot down below that. Okay. Okay. Oh, Bill, for you on this one, those are correct words to use for that uh, one? Yeah, well, actually, we don't have counties anymore. So, Hampshire Registry of Deeds, and Hampshire Registry District of the Land. Okay, Court. so I'll take that out. Very good. Okay. Then it's got to get from Jessica a chapter of this, uh, the, the bylaw is going to be. Oh, okay. Okay. Now, I think we need to put these, the ability to utilize this fund back in the affordable housing bylaw. Did we, did we take, did we take we that out? We took it out. We took it out. So we need to go back, put the wording word, put re and pre, okay. Reinsert to include the zoning. What is it? Allowed the gifts to yeah. or trade right. uh, the allowed yeah. right. direct payments. We have that language in the. Um, it's, I know it was in one of Larry's drafts. Right. So we just took it out, yeah. but we can add it back in easily right. enough. This so that would probably be the s within the same article. Too. That's what I'm thinking. We could well, actually, no, because that's a one zoning article. One to zone, one to general. So two different articles. Okay. Good question. Okay, so I email David. Next. Question. I'll ask Bill on yeah. that. He's, he's a Okay, so we have the zone article, the general article, the definition. So in definitions, we can have what's being added and what's being taken out as right. one article. Right. So that's three, three zones and one general. Mm -hmm. This will be the, For the parking, housing, yeah. housing trust fund will be a general side by law. We may need our own, okay. our own okay. definitions in this. Bill, in, uh, or anyone who, who can answer it, in section four, of, it says of the, it's okay. page three yeah. of the of the trust powers of trustees. Yes. I go down to sec, uh, to sub paragraph C. Yep. Toward the end of that first line, any personal mixed or real property. What is mixed property? Mixed would be a combination of business and residential. Uh, okay. Well, mixed property. Well, personal, mixed, or real. Uh, mixed would be something like fixtures. So oh. you get the question of whether the walk-in refrigerator that's on the real estate is part of the building or is it personal property. Uh -huh. Okay. So, so mixed or real? Okay. The free the freestanding refrigerator you have personal in your kitchen is personal property. <clears throat> the built-in and you have in your ultra luxury kitchen right. might be a fixture, right. um, and the Refrigerator warehouse is real property. Okay. Thank you. Interesting. I never realized that one. Okay. Okay. Everybody else good for those? I think that was all my. Yep. Oh, at the end of uh, section six, we go to the next page, just before section seven. Is there something missing there? It says, subject to the requirements of the open meeting law, continue a meeting to a time, date, and place certain. Cool. I'm just not sure that reads right. Yep, no, no. I got the Whiteley bylaw here, so I might have omitted something here. 
remember, this was not the complete final bylaw. This was okay. this was essentially it. But there was one other piece that they were going to get me, and they never got it to me. Okay. I'll call her up and ask if they're. Gonna... No, no, I, I think, think that's the that, that, that's fine. While a majority, I just didn't know if that was legal while ease or. While majority of the full board of trustees shall constitute a quorum for the transaction of, of any business. Of the, board of, of the board of trustees, less than a quorum, subject to the requirements of the open meeting law, may be. Oh, say less than a quorum may, comma, subject to the requirements of the open meeting law, comma, continue a meeting to a time, date, place, certain. That that reads. Okay. Oh, so it's to, so to, to a, or, so it's like a certain place or time. Yes. It's yes. Put certain at the end. Right. So. Uh, it's like Middle English or something. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, a, a date, a time, date, and a place certain is, is it's legalese. There's but something between lawyers and Shakespeare. And, and no, the comma is critical because somebody was uh, referring to the Second Amendment for well armed militia, comma, and blah, 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 comma. <laughs> and it does make a difference in the, the way people interpret it. So the idea of date, and time, and place certain is that if you do have to adjourn the meeting, you have to give a we are we don't have a quorum. We're adjourning to next Tuesday night at six thirty mm -hmm. here. Got it. Uh, you can't just say we don't have a quorum. We're it's, adjourned. Right. You have to give your next destination. Yes. Right. Gotcha. Okay. So that anybody who came is on notice of wh where to come back to. Any more? This I'll be a paralegal. Okay. <laughs> okay. That takes care of. I think that's that. everything. Uh, I did send. Oh. I do have one more. Budget. The budget is due for tomorrow, by tomorrow, the end of the day. My proposal is to level fund everything but the planning services, which is 7500 today, and go to 15000 Double it from the conversation we had with Kim. <coughs> Do we need the administrative system, or should we strike that bill? Because we haven't used any money. Uh, that is in there. Um, yes, we need it. Uh, okay, leave it. We are using uh, Tim's assistant on an as-needed basis, and it is part of a. It's part of a structured. Uh, compensation package with her services being spread across multiple departments. Okay. Do you think that just by saying double is kind of a would make a significant impact if you made a little smaller number rather than just say double or, or I'm making a big deal out of it? Well, or how many years has it been that it hasn't increased? That would be probably since it began, since but it we, began. Can, we, we can check back. We can check back. It's, it's at least at least 10 years, probably closer to 15. I think that alone might justify it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it might yeah. be too little. Yeah. Wow, I don't want to get yeah. greedy. Well, the other part of it is we have to balance out. We're meeting with Ken uh, roughly once a month. He's doing a certain amount of work in between. Um, and, um, you know, it, in, in our current system, that's about what it needs. Um, if we do have this enhanced service for, uh, through PVPC, whether Ken or someone else, that will come out of another pocket, I think. Uh, just going back to Affordable Housing Trust, um, I sent out an email late this afternoon to everyone with everything that I have been accumulating on Affordable Housing Trusts, including the various texts that we just have been looking at, some um, estate pamphlet with guidelines. Um, Affordable housing trusts from some other communities and the um, the statute. So you've seen many of the pieces before, 
but at least now they'll all be in one email for Do, your convenience. Does the trust allow subject to acceptance of the trustees gifts of real estate? Yes. It does. Yes. I could find it in there, but I know I, I remember seeing yeah, that that's specific a, words. That's important. Purchase and retain to accept and receive real property, personal money, gift, etc. Okay, contribution. Okay, yeah, it's in. Okay, it's yeah, right. Yeah, right in. Um, 4A. Okay, it's part of an estate plan. Somebody might want to give them some real estate. Plan. They they might. Uh, there's there may be. Better way to do it. Well, no. I'm just thinking there may be some. Uh, it's not completely clear whether a gift is complete upon being made or whether even a gift has to be accepted by town meeting. Um, um, I, I don't think there's a, there's a clear rule on that. Okay. But you would not necessarily want to be gifted a piece of swamp. The town no, might not no. want to be gifted no, a piece of swa swamp so, land. Or, so, yeah. said subject to acceptance by yep. the trustees. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Do we need to do anything on the what Janice sits into us? Not tonight. The who? The issue on Stockwell Road. Stockwell Road. No, that's going to be our um, next meeting. Okay. Oh, wait a minute. That is going to be <coughs> March third. Administrative review. Okay. Yeah, that that there may they 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 may have some issues there. We wouldn't have known about the issues if we had not decided to send everything to the appropriate boards. To meet the well, it's, it's <coughs> that is that is part of the reason we send things exactly. out. Exactly. I just yeah. want to point that out. Yeah. Yeah. Because I send out. The notices of the plans to various boards, uh -huh. and then in addition to that, I send out a email called "In Good Standing," meaning financially with the accountant, the uh, all the people in the first floor and second floor that have anything to do with money, uh -huh. and and the police chief and the DPW. Is there anybody with outstanding? Issues, you know, not up to date on their licenses, their fees, or taxes, whatever it might be. And it's amazing. We find some issues, and like this one with the uh, well, when he had the, the spice the, company, the spice company, it was a small water bill, was like you know, a few hundred bucks. Yeah, they were in town meeting, town hall the next day at nine o'clock in the morning with, with a check. Incentive. <laughs> Before Bill could even find out who was going to pay it or who's in slot, who's responsible, the bill had been paid. Yeah. And it was nice to see the system work. Okay. Anyway, I've got nothing else. I have nothing else. Okay. Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Meeting of history. Thank you and thank you, John. <laughs>